I'm Jono Buchanan. In a previous video, we had a chance to look at the MIDI effect called modulator to see what it can do when it interrupts a synth parameter such as the filter cutoff. What we're going to do in this video is to expand our understanding of this particular MIDI effect by seeing how we can apply it to effects parameters as well as synth parameters. Now, this is possible because there's a plugin parameter learn option within the modulator, and by enabling it, what we can do is to effectively teach it which parameter we want to change. Before we do that though, let's just listen to the track we'll be working on. Okay, now the first track within my mix that I want to apply this effect to is the bass line. The bass is playing here, it's using a retro synth um, plugin, but what it's also doing is passing through a couple of effects plugins too, namely the compressor and the bit crusher. And it's one parameter within the bit crusher that I want to modulate. So the first thing I'm going to do is to set up modulator on this track, which is right here. And then what I have a chance to do is to begin to think about how to teach the modulator effect how to connect to the parameter that I want. Now, if you haven't watched the main modulator video, which teaches you how the LFO and the envelope within this module work, I strongly suggest you do because we had a chance to look at that in depth. What I'm gonna do here that's different to the way that we looked at it within that first video was to come down here, is to come down here to the bottom, and what I'm going to do instead is to come up to learn plugin parameter. Now, what you'll know if you've watched that first video is that this little uh, window here allows me to decide where I'm sending the information that the LFO is going to generate. And specifically, what I want to do is to open the learn MIDI uh, plugin parameter option so that I'm in a position to teach the, um, this assignment where I want it to go. Now specifically what I want to do is to send it into the downsampling amount of the bit crusher. And the moment I touch that dial, I can see straight away the all hell breaks loose. Straight away now the downsampling is going absolutely crazy. Why is it doing that? Well, because the LFO shape that's being created automatically here is now being rooted into that parameter. And I can see that Logic's even automating it for me so I can see exactly what's going on. So let's get things a little bit more under control. Firstly, what do I want the shape of this LFO to be? Do I want it to be the triangle wave that I'm seeing at the moment? Or do I want it to be a different shape? Let's suppose I choose a sine wave instead. At the moment, I've also got this incredibly fast rate. I can see that it's clocked to tempo, but what I can do is just slow it right down, which is absolutely what I want to do. I'm going to slow it down to uh, four bars. And now what's happening is that the downsampling rate is only changing over a much slower period of time. It's still changing a lot, all the way up to maximum downsampling, but it is much slower than it was before. What if what I want to do is to restrict how high or low the movement can get? Well, I can see the whole time that I make changes to um, any parameter, I can see this little box down here is drawing and showing me the shape that I'm creating. And part of one of the parameters that I've got available is output level. It stands to reason that if I decrease the amount of output level, then of course the shape won't get as high as it does when it's at maximum. And what that corresponds to is the downsampling amount over here. Now, rather than going all the way through to its absolutely maximum possible value, whilst it's still downsampling a lot, it's not going nearly as far as it was before. Now, what are the implications for the sound? Well, it now sounds like this. And I can hear it unfolding over time. Now, what I'm actually going to do is to take that down to two bars, and I am going to come back to a triangle shape instead. I'm going to slightly increase the amount of um, output so that it's going over a wider range. Sure enough, as soon as I adjust that, I can see now that the downsampling rate is getting up to 20 or so, a little bit higher than that. Let's see what it sounds like within the context of the mix.
Okay, so that's working really nicely, but it's quite an extreme effect. What if I want to hear a bit of this, but not nearly so much as I am hearing at the moment? Well, the Bitcrusher, like lots of Lo uh, Logic's plugins, has got a mix dial. So if I back this down so that far more of the signal is unprocessed and most of the baseline isn't being bit crushed, then of course we're still going to get the same effect, but it's going to be much more subtle. Okay, that's nice. We're getting a kind of characteristic bit crushing aliasy kind of sound, but without um, quite so extreme an effect. Okay, so that deals with that particular sound, the bass sound. What I also want to do is to change a synth parameter, which I don't have just available within RetroSynth to just immediately modulate. Let me set up the modulator again on this next door instrument, this airy pick sound, which is here, which is just sort of basic synth pluck. And if I um, open up the um, Synth parameter will just hear this sound by itself. Now, the reason that we're hearing change to this sound at the moment is because, as happens by default when we open the modulator, any uh, movement is being routed through to the modulation wheel. And within RetroSynth, if I open up the settings parameter, we have a chance to see that the mod wheel is being routed to the filter cutoff. So what we're now seeing is this LFO shape, which is changing the tone of the sound. Now, I don't want to do that. What I want to do instead, again, is to learn a, per a particular parameter. And I'm going to do exactly the same thing that I did before with the baseline. I'm going to open up the modulator options for this version of the modulator, the one that's on this retro synth sound. I'm going to come again to learn plugin parameter, and I'm going to leave that available. And this time, the parameter that I want to automate is the decay time of this synth. Now again, the moment I touch that, I can begin to see that that parameter is modulating. And again, using the same shape as before, now what I'm doing is to modulate the decay time. The decay time is responsible for controlling how quickly a sound dies away. So a short decay time means that it'll be a very spiky short sound, and a long decay time means that it will sort of fade out, if you like. And what I'm doing now is I'm modulating that speed. Now again, it's so fast at the moment using this quarter note effect that we're not going to hear that very clearly. So to hear it properly, what I'm going to do is to slow the rate down over a bar, and what we're going to now do is to hear the difference in that decay speed as a result of this LFO movement. Now, there are a couple of other things that I could add here. For instance, what I might choose to do would be to select a random shape instead. Now, by default, the random shape is a sort of square wave. What I'm going to do is to speed it up now to, um, let's say, an eighth note. And now what I'm going to get is a random output. And one thing that's worth remembering and that's really nice is we get a chance to see the kind of correspondence between this box showing us our current output level and the implications that that's having over here for the decay time. But now we've got a much less predictable shape rather than just following the same pattern as before, it's going to be jumping around randomly. If I don't want this to be quite so square and hard edged, if I want to, I can just introduce a little bit of smoothing and I can now see that the movement's just a little bit more sinuous. The shape up here is again, a bit less hard. And of course we're seeing that reflected in this box too. Okay, and that's nice. And remember, our output level allows us to control the maximum amount of this effect. So if I want the parameters to spend a little bit more time with shorter notes rather than the longer ones, I can simply just rein this in so that effectively the movement never gets quite so high as it was before. And now what we've got is this kind of constantly evolving little synth pluck. Let's see what both of those modulators are now doing for the mix overall. I'm just going to turn this sound up in the mix a little bit.
Okay, and so suddenly now we've got this kind of really interesting sort of pair of shapes where two parameters that we'd otherwise have to automate are now being modulated in different ways. And of course, it's worth bearing in mind that you can still use automation. I could choose other parameters that I wanted to kind of contour in uh, sort of alongside these LFO movements just to create extra ways of being able to shape this sound. So what we've seen across two videos now is that the modulator plugin is an amazingly adaptable interface. What we can do is to create shapes to interrupt signals. And by teaching the plugin which parameter we want to target with its movement, we can create all kinds of really interesting effects. Imagine, for instance, picking the decay time of a reverb as your parameter, effectively the whole time, the space in which a sound that you were playing back would be moving either very rapidly or very slowly over time, just shifting the kind of spatial characteristics of a sound. So use your imagination, think about all the ways in which you could apply this effect and go and have some fun.